Show No Warriors. It's your boy, Lionheart, and I'm back. Feels good, mate. Bro, that PlayStation showcase, unbelievable. Unreal. Yeah, that's the... I know, I know. I should have done a video, breaking down the videos, the trailers, everything like that a couple of days ago. But I'll be honest with you, I lost my voice. If you watch my reactions, are you actually surprised? I weren't expecting any of that. It took me by complete surprise. I was completely amazed, right, by everything that I was seeing. And Devil May Cry, man, that is my get. I love Devil May Cry, right? Look, for everybody else, they celebrate Dante and Devil May Cry whenever there's an announcement. Everybody loves Dante, remembers Dante. Every single day is a Dante day for me. Every single day I celebrate some Devil May Cry, right? So to see something new like that, mind-blowing. Please understand. So, let's do the housekeeping regarding to Final Fantasy um, 16 Awakening, right? So, you have um, the producer of Final Fantasy 14 Online. His name is... Naoki Yoshida. I'm sure I said that wrong. Sorry. Yeah. He's a producer of Final Fantasy XIV Online. And to be honest with you, I knew it as I was watching the trailer. I was trying not to like the trailer, to be absolutely honest with you. Because I thought it was, this has definitely got to be Final Fantasy XIV um, Online. Because from the second I saw the face of Joshua in that trailer, I knew that is the style, the aesthetics... That is definitely Final Fantasy XIV. It's got to be. Like, they're doing a new expansion, but it's going to be the PlayStation 5 version, so they've reworked everything. I was convinced of that, yeah? And I could tell by the music. But because it just looks so drastically different, and it was so incredible and so impressive, I was thinking, it can't be that. This is... The graphics look too good. Everything just looks way too dynamic to be Final Fantasy XIV Online. What is this? No, it's not a fan. This did this not a it's not a final fantasy. It must be like a new game utilizing the kind of style of Final Fantasy 14. I don't know, man. Furthest away from the idea of Final Fantasy 16 was I. Furthest possible distance and realization that this was Final Fantasy 16. And my Roman numerals isn't great. Yeah, so I mean, I should have known, right? Looking at the Roman numerals X, 10, V, 5, and 1, I should have known, but you know, whatever. So, um, I want to talk about some of the aspects in terms of the trailer because it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, so that is that. Yeah, which I'm not surprised actually that um, Yoshida is work on this game because he's made a lot of money for Square Enix, yeah, with uh, Final Fantasy XIV Online and Realm Reborn. Yeah, and then you have something that we're, we pretty much have confirmed is the battle director for that game. His name is... Ryota Suzuki. Ryota Suzuki. I think I said his name correctly. Doubt it, but, you know, I'm trying here. So, what we know is he used to work for Capcom, Yeah. He worked on Devil May Cry 5. He worked on Dragon's Dogma. He worked on Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. He has got a high level pedigree. You just can't believe Capcom let this guy go. I mean, I'm glad because now we're getting this. You look at most Capcom games that are good, you'll see this guy's name in the credits. 100%. Dark Arisen and Devil May Cry 5 alone, you can tell this guy is godlike. Highest, the best games of the Capcom generation currently, yeah, is Devil May Cry 5. He's worked on Monster Hunter World. He's worked on. You know, what do you what do you say about it? But anyway, they let him go. High Square Enix. Now we see Final Fantasy um, 16, and you can heavily see his influences in that game which we're going to get into so if we look at the trailer yeah like let's take a look at when you first see him fighting in the swamp yeah and he's fighting against it looks 
like some type of weird goblin yeah and he's fighting you can see some type of like fire element yeah that he has got yeah and i think there's bits where you see his arm yeah it's just one arm is on fire is imbued with fire yeah and he can do certain attacks where you see like a wing and he's got like a teleport right when he's on um, fire and it's very interesting to see that it's when he glows with fire that you see that he can do certain abilities like he got teleporting he could do like evasion and you see like the fire element he could do slashes where he's imbued with fire and also he's got contextual kills because i don't know if it's contextual but there was a bit where the goblin fell on the floor and he teleported and impaled the goblin while the goblin was on the floor yeah so i think yeah and i believe it's phoenix ability that he is imbued with whether he's possessed by it or he's got some type of um ability linked to the power of phoenix yeah we don't know those details but he definitely has got some type of power related to the phoenix because when you see some the abilities that he's got like an uppercut and then you see like the phoenix wing a fire phoenix wing which graphics look incredible right and he's got like a block it looked like a block or a parry where you saw like the phoenix wing um come out as well he's got fire attacks well it's basically the fire spell and he could do the strikes um cancelled it looks like he could do fire fire cancel into the fire imbued slash in, and then he teleported straight away to where the enemy was and then he did like a fire slash or it could be a teleport and attack at the same time because he did that and then he actually done like an evade sidestep in the air straight after the slash and almost looked like a cancel so it was like teleport slash evade but if you look closely he's on fire every time he does one of those type accentuated attacks he's on fire with this certain element yeah like i call it like the phoenix devil trigger mode yeah, or activation. I don't know what it is, right? Yeah, and when you saw him in the swamp fighting Marlboro Tentacle, bro, that is... God, they don't get no Final Fantasy than that. But he's fighting Marlboro Tentacle on his own in a swamp? Bro, mate, every time you fight Marlboro Tentacle, it's a battle, bro. It is an absolute war because you are terrified of his damage of his bite and of bad breath yeah so the fact that the main character look like the main character is fighting marble tentacle on his own and he's got fire bro look give me fire and that's all i need and good movement bro i'm in there yeah so you saw that godlike so we know that we love what we're seeing there and then also you see there's a lot of good acting this is one thing i love when you're watching this trailer yeah you saw good characters like like interesting looking characters you saw political um intrigue where the basically uh, i don't know whether he was like the guild leader or one of the council council members or ministers or whichever and he was probably talking to one of like a powerful sorceress or whoever she was some crazy some cool looking lady most fire fantasies have always evolved around a crystal that gives the that is very sought after that can protect people that empowers people yeah within a nation and um, that is watched over and protected by the crystal Right, and there's like a blight they were saying, right? Which looks like Final Fantasy 15. This looks to me like a game that is everything that Final Fantasy 15 should have been. Interesting looking characters, political espionage, infighting, warring nations, incredible cutscenes, acting, and awesome looking characters in depth looking into the politics the regimes and implementation of um, legislation to manipulate the, the masses and political power struggles and all that type of stuff right is everything that final fantasy 15 failed to be it looks like this game is that i don't even want to say final fantasy 15. final fantasy 15 put that in the bin yeah, that game goes in the bin. We don't really want to talk about that game. 
yeah so it's like really fascinating you see the chocobos you see titan yeah versus shiva right and that was another thing right because there were certain parts of the game where the graphics just looked incredible right but then there were certain points where the graphics didn't look too great yeah so every time i was like coming to the idea whoa is this what is this you know maybe it was dawning on me then i would see the graphics on shiva didn't look great it looked very final fantasy 14 online yeah and then that knocked me down to the realization or idea that this could is potentially going to be final fantasy 14 online like a new massive expansion right and then you would see bits like Shiva versus Titan and there's a massive war, a war among nations and it's just like unbelievable and you're like what is going on here right uh, and then you see in, um, instances of like cl classic textbook Final Fantasy where you see the Dragoon class bro and you saw the armor that he was wearing and the lance that he was using, like the Imperial Dragoon, fighting against the main character. And that fight in itself looked godlike. I don't get no Devil May Cry than that, bro. You know, and yeah, you saw like the swag of the main character, bro. When he did that, that mad spin and then his foot like slid on the floor, bro. My man. That is just some incredible stuff, man. And that's what I was talking about. Because there was a part in that combat where you saw the dragoon jump into the air and do like a, a helm breaker. And then the main character did like an uppercut, yeah, with the phoenix wing. And then he cancelled it and dashed back. So I don't know. So what, the uppercut hit the helm breaker and then you can cancel it and teleport that um, like evade away from it so it's a lot to absorb in terms of what are we watching what is the combat elements in this game because it just looks so fast and dynamic right and the evasion with the main character you can see that the um evasion is you've got invincible frames on his evasion 100 percent there's evasion right because it's just so fast it's not an evade it's an invincible evade Right, so there's going to be a lot of tight timing, right, to get invincible evades and parrying. Every time you would teleport forward and you would see him on fire, he'd always do a slash. And it looks like that teleport slash is one move and it can always be cancelled. Yeah, so it might be their version of like a helm breaker. Like, I love what I was seeing. And then you even saw elements where you saw the future version of the main character fighting against, I think it was a queen, Koho. Right, and I'm terrified of that monster. I'm absolutely petrified of that monster. He was like one of my worst nightmare characters simply because so much HP, um, ice attacks, thunder attacks, and it's got like some scary attack which I dread called Blaster. And the finish of Blaster is instant death, and death would always get me, right? For one simple reason, I never protected myself against death, right? Because the way I would customize my character and build my characters, it was hardly ever against status effects or death, right? Because I would build like my characters with such high DPS that I would obliterate any enemy that had death or confuse or sleep or poison or anything like that before they got a chance to implement those type of skills so i offset. So i said to myself i'm going to offset me having skills to protect me against death by having such incredible dps they would die before they could implement it and the um the queen cult earl i know i'm saying that wrong right but that kind of like lightning tiger carrot and monster right had blaster and it would always down me and it was just it's just a nightmare for me yeah when i saw that enemy bad memories yeah so that is incredible right to see those type of things and then you saw like another part where you saw uh the main character fighting against a massive goblin yeah and it was he was in the air slashing 
and he had Garuda. You could clearly see he had Garuda's ability. I would call it Garuda's wind element devil trigger or activation mode, yeah? And you know, because when you saw him doing slashes, you would see the Garuda claw, yeah? Garuda is wind. Like, she was like a wind summon or Elendon. Or what they call it, icons in this game, yeah. So you saw um her attacks, yeah, while he was doing slashes. And then you could clearly see that the attacks with um Garuda is more aerial maneuverability, incredible aerial maneuverability, and just speed. Because you saw the goblin, the giant goblin, was trying to do an attack. And so fast and powerful were the aerial attacks from the main character using the um, Garuda wind um, activation. They actually stopped Garu um, the goblins' attacks. Like, and that never happens. When a monster or an enemy is doing an attack, it's their turn. But he actually stopped the goblins' attack with the Garuda activation yes that's another thing that you as you could see right in the uh in the trailer and also you see blood i don't remember if we've seen blood in final fantasy before i'm trying to think final fantasy 7 final fantasy 10 8 9 12 13 15 i don't think we've seen blood like, you saw, like, some guy, yeah, his head got lopped off, yeah, and blood sprayed on Joshua, right? And, yeah, and you saw blood, man. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. I'm, I'm for it, man. It's, it's good stuff, man. You know, yeah, so, yeah, we saw a lot of those kind of elements. And also, you saw, like, there was a bit where the main character was using... Titan's ability and you could clearly see his Titan because there were certain bits where you see Titan's fist and then you would see like kind of like crystal crystallization or crystallists golden crystallists on Titan's fist and then when you look at um the main character like the future version of him when he's doing certain attacks you actually see the tight the crystallizations on his fists right and he's doing like Titan punches yeah which is like, is godlike, man, right? So you could definitely see that it's the main character and he's, whether he's possessed by the Titan or the icons as they call them in, in, in this game or whichever it is, he's got their abilities, right? Uh, also, we don't know really what is happening with um, the summons or icons as they call them in this game, right? Because you can see like the character Joshua, right? He's got some type of mad powers, man. Whether it be... I don't know whether he's got Phoenix and Ifrit. Or he's just got Ifrit in him. And the main character's got Phoenix. I have no idea, man. You did see a bit in the trailer where the main character... I don't know, was injured or something? Maybe he'd come back from defeating those... Um, Marble Tentacle, right? He's going on maybe an excursion... Or like a mission to clear out any monsters from around the um, nation or the place that they were living, the village. And maybe he was injured and Joshua was using like his phoenix ability to heal him. Don't know. We really don't know what is going on too much with this main character. But you saw him unleash Ifrit. But then you saw another summon... Phoenix and if you look back at Final Fantasy you've never really seen Phoenix and Ifrit at the same time in the same game well you saw it in Final Fantasy 8 right but Final Fantasy 8 was a bit different yeah in terms of the way you used Phoenix right because uh, Phoenix was a card you used it was more like a not a card, it was an item where Phoenix would just resurrect everybody. Yeah, you see like a summon and he would come up and he would like um, help everybody. Right, so it's kind of different the way some um, 
Phoenix worked. And even when you look at the trailer, you do see one of the uh, protectors of Joshua. Yeah, he said two icons of fire at the same time. But that's impossible, right? Which does make sense. Yeah, because um, Final Fantasy has always had summons or illindons or icons as they call them in this game with different elements. But this one you actually see two of the same um, elements which is it's good that summons are in the game and they're playing like a really big role in the game. The way a Final Fantasy should be. Magic, spells, summons, that kind of like medieval time period you know i love it man it's just absolutely incredible and then you see like the fights and we don't know because we can clearly 100 percent see that there is a time skip in the game right you see like the final Fa you hear the final fantasy music you hear the prelude music that was what was confusing me as i was watching it because you're hearing the final fantasy music and I was thinking, all right, so that's the reason it was convincing me that it is a Final Fantasy game. It's got to be the Final Fantasy 14 online game. It's just got to be, bro. As I've watched, I've watched that trailer, I'd say close to about 100 times now, if not more than that. I've just had it on loop, basically, on my um, big screen TV, right? And then when you see, like, the main character, you see a young version of him. And then you see an older version of him, right? So maybe the event, so maybe that's the um, way you see the whole situation happen where maybe that nation is attacked, who knows, by another nation and Joshua probably dies or gets turned into, oh, he unleashes his power, goes crazy, becomes Ifrit and then gets killed or he dies once he unleashes that power, right? Maybe that sparks a, after that situation, a time skip happens. And that's what causes the quest for vengeance with the main character. Because you see him say, I'll kill you. Yeah, and you see like a young version of him. And then it switches. And then you see like the older version of him. Yeah, and he says, I'll kill you if it's the last thing I do. Right? 100% that's the same, the same character. Because I've looked at the graphics of the characters, his face structure, and it is definitely him. This is an incredible um, direction for Final Fantasy. Yeah, I love it. This is what I want to see in my Final Fantasy game, this type of a world, because when I look at Final Fantasy, I love it when it's in this kind of like steam medieval a period of Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 9, Final Fantasy 6, Final Fantasy 5, Final Fantasy, um, well no, not Final Fantasy um, 6, because Final Fantasy 6 did have kind of like machines and stuff like that, let's say Final Fantasy 5, Final Fantasy 9, Final Fantasy 12, I love that type of um, that type of world of Final Fantasy where you see summons, magic, um, just mad adventure, Bro, I'm all for it, man. I'm in there. I'm in there, man. So, I can't wait to see more. They do say that they, we are going to have to wait till 2021. Yeah, maybe I think summer, they said. But look, man, this trailer is enough to do me over. Yeah? So, bro, I'm good. But the one thing I would say in closing is the graphics do need a little bit of work still but some elements of it where well, the graphics look incredible some where well, it didn't but anyway warriors that's my breakdown for the final fantasy 16 awakened trailer yeah we went in yeah so yeah warriors let me know what you guys think and um yeah that's all i really wanted to say thanks for watching thanks for tuning in thanks for your support stick with me and let's keep pushing forward all right laters warriors